maybe they can't do exactly what John Williams or, 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 or whoever um, does, but they can come pretty close. But still, I mean, because Chris really pushed me. I would listen to an episode, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm not going to get hired next week because I, I don't even know how he did that. I, you know, and I remember you called me once because I, I like, got a bootleg copy <laughs> of, of, the, of the Hans Zimmer LSO French yeah. horn. And, and remember, you called me. You go, where the hell did you get those French horns? That's right, I did. I said, That's amazing. Good. And and you know, hands had gone to Dole. and and done the <laughs> London Symphony Orchestra, and somebody like slipped it under the table to me, and all of a sudden I had these just like enormous like fa 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 fa, fa and it, you know, so I'm do, we're doing Chuck Norris, and he's kicking people for thirty minutes. <laughs> 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 Pretty much French horns play for 29 and a half minutes, you know, <laughs> whatever it was. Like, listen to other people and, and be motivated by other people and say, how about you call them up? You know, I, I mean, I call other people all the time. Call your players up if you have real players and say, hey, can you do this? And they'll, they'll, they'll say, no, you're crazy. I mean, we all study about, like, clarinet at the break, a, you know, between A and B flat. And it turns out that's, like, it doesn't matter if you're a good enough clarinet player. You just, like, blow through that whole thing, you know? It's, and so there's these rules that we think we might know that are actually maybe not true. And there are also limitations. Like if you have an ethnic flute player, I, I'm doing this all the time. I'm calling him up. I go, what key is your flute in? You know, And he comes to the phone and he, he plays it for me. And I, I may record it or just like figure out the notes he can play in. And then then you're writing to that that instrument. You're only hiring one guy, you know, 300 bucks, whatever it is. Mm. And you're, you're getting this great ethnic kind of cool sound. But don't write it for him in a flat key, I'm sure. Don't write it for him in E flat. I'm positive, you know. So listen to what he can play and, and mm. you know, all those things. You, know, all, you, you can also ask him if you're going to do it. Who are you using Chris Black? Um, I'm using Fred Selden right now. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I tell you one thing that I did on my last uh, uh, large score, which is like a hundred piece thing. Wow. What I did was uh, I had, and actually this was on, uh, uh, it was a John Landis movie called The Stupids, which lasted exactly an hour in the uh, theaters. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I think, no, 45 minutes actually. Um, but anyway, it was a hundred piece thing at Abbey Road. And what I did was I, I didn't want to use uh, the orchestra as one gigantic um, Pro Tools rig uh, to make sure that I could figure out what to do. So what I did was I brought in the first players of each section and I had them play the parts down. And I also had them put in the bow marks and all the articulations. Because you know, when you're sitting around the session, you work your ass off getting everything right, and then you go to look at the part after you're done, you take the thing home. It's got marks all over. All over the place. The thing looks like you know, it's like flypaper. Right. Um, and and you're going pencil what? marks from the plate. Yeah, and you're going, WTF, man! I spent all this time doing this. Okay, so if you get the guy, you know, your first chair, you know, and that's some bum. I mean, someone who really knows their stuff. You pay the money, you get him to go over there. Guess what? You saved thousands of dollars. Remember, every time, you know, you sit there going, hmm, that's. <laughs> Four thousand. Oh, pardon me, but I'm about four. You go to thousand eight, six thousand, and thousand crotch into the seventy seven. About it, you can't in the full bar. There's a dot missing. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> Get another job. That's what you do. Right, right. You use know, your, use your brain. Thank you. Yeah, yourself. yeah. Thank you very much. You know, uh, figure it out. You know. <laughs> But what you, you were saying about about it is, is so would you look at the parts and, and see, see what they were doing as well, far as like yeah. where they would go off the bow on? Well, the after a while, I got, I, got it, I got it down and I actually did buy uh, some string instruments just for no other reason but just to actually go over the bow part because as you play faster and ha as you play harder, rather, you use more bow, right? So it really comes that well. Yeah. What? Well, it really like comes down to the articulation that it comes down to come down to to a. Where are you in the instrument? You know, in other words, which string are you on, and what is what are what are the dynamics, right? So if you're playing really loud, <coughs> that bow's going to be rocking back and forth like a son of a bitch. But if you're playing, <laughs> so if you're writing a line going, but you want it to end on a down bow, 
right? Sometimes you have to start with the up bow because you got X number of notes. Dee da 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 dee da 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 ba da dee da 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 uh. Now, if you did this, ba da 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 dee da 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 bee da 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 uh. Right? With the, with, with the tip. Well, it's going to suck. <laughs> you know? So it's stuff like that. Um, which, by the way, we're doing automatically in our next round. Because <laughs> uh, 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 it counts, it but looks... See, see, you get into Chris's mind is like how freaking crazy he is about this crap. And, and you know, and, I mean, how... how <laughs> <laughs> no, and, but well, he's... Freak he, he is, yeah. Yeah. Can you talk a little more about the, more on the low budget side? Like, do you use Logic too? Yeah. Or, and do you mix it in Logic? Do you send it to someone? Like, how far along... If you're doing it all in like box... We do, the, we do the exact same thing. We, I've been no, talking. Wait, have, you my been, voice have you been? Yeah, like, like, I'm mixing in logic. In, you mix sounds oh, I mix. Uh, okay, I, I mix in logic. So if, if it's all MIDI, right? So I've got the AI strings coming in, and now they ha have all their own channels. I got violins, violas, cellos, basses, right? And then I got space on another complete stereo stem. So there. And then I have my different other patches, I have my Giga Studio things, I have my pianos and everything, they're all in some. I hire a, an engineer and he comes in and he mixes the whole deal. In Logic? In Logic. Um, I, I go through TDM. I don't recommend that. Um, but mix it in Logic, get a really high grade professional interface, like the Apogees are fantastic as well. They cost about as much as, as, as TDM. Joel's gone totally Apogee. Yeah. Right now, use and antelope clocks, and and it, and it works really good. <laughs> right now, Apogee's symphony system and Logic are, are really melded well, <coughs> and and there's very few bugs in between those two. So, but why does it matter if it's all in the box? Well, because it's all in the box, but it's coming in through light pipe into your symphony cards, right? So, so you've got like separate. Let's say you have a PC that's, or, or you have two PCs that from AI. Those are coming in or Ethernet or light pipe, however they're coming in. Ethernet. They, Ethernet. We got rid of the light pipe. <coughs> I, 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 I've heard that. But so there's there's a clocking issue, there's a sonic issue. I really is anybody from Mark of the Unicorn here? Oh no. Uh, I have I have okay, I, I just I, I just feel there's a difference between Digidesign's hardware, Apogee's hardware, and then other hardware. <laughs> Okay, oh, yeah. and, and I just think there's semi-pro stuff, and then there's Digidesign and, and Apogee and stuff. And, and I think that even translates, even though it's supposed to be light pipe, even though it's supposed to sound just kick-ass and stuff because it's just digital, there's a difference in the way it sounds when it comes into a Pro Tool system or it comes into an Apogee system, it sounds way better. So you're stemming it down at that point? Do you go stereo mix to the, and get the Pro Tool? Well, stemming is is a is a different. Um, what we call stems are, are different. No, we're we're mixing it into a mixer. Just think of it as like you've got a like a forty eight channel mixer. It's the same thing. So I have a you know seventy channel mixer in in Logic. It's all different faders for all my different machines that are coming in. And so then we mix those. We automate it. We compress different things like drums, and we mix it all in Logic. And then, now Joel does it a bit differently. I bounce to disc Are at that point. Are you mixing the um, tracks, controlling the live playback, or are you uh, bringing in uh, printed uh, material and then uh, adjusting the volumes and uh, mixing Do you, do you bounce your virtual instruments? No. Uh, no, I, I never bounce my Pro Tools instruments. So I, I, that, you, never, you never record your... your like, I, I never, no. You don't need really it, right? Your Giga I'm Studio so instrument. You, like, you don't record you don't audio, you don't print the audio. No, no. no. No, they just play, they're playing via MIDI and you mix them only at the final stage.